Cars is a, an expression of what a joint is capable of doing. So there's a term in the literature right now called workspace, which if people haven't heard about this in the literature yet, they either haven't been reading recent literature or they haven't come stumbled across it yet, but they will. So this concept of workspace will be the, the big outcome measure moving forward. And what workspace uh, looks at is, if I'm using my shoulder, if I draw a circle, which people call it, or if I do cars with the shoulder, if you try to give me as big a circle as you can, if you imagine that I'm taking a pen and as I draw, I'm drawing this big, large circle, right? And what the researchers are finding now are when you have aberrant joints, problems in joints, when you draw these circles, you'll start to see breaks in the circle. So you'll see, see the circle isn't as fluid. It's not moving as well. Um, you'll see a decreased amount of workspace. So for example, one person, their arm comes all the way up here. Another person does this, and they come over. That person, the second person, they're dealing with less workspace than their counterpart who can, who can draw that big circle. So how, what do you extrapolate from that? Well, if you don't have a lot of workspace, the first thing that I'm going to look at is whether you have enough capsular space. And there's a difference. So when I'm doing shoulder cars, where my hand can go, this big circle is the workspace. But in order to demonstrate my workspace, the humerus and the glenoid have to move independent of one another so that I can actually draw this circle. So now, if I'm looking at someone's workspace, I go, there's something wrong. The first thing i got to find out is, are they actually moving through that workspace with the intended joint? They're showing me a workspace which is, which is demonstrating limitations in the shoulder, which are then being compensated for by movements elsewhere. So if I see someone can't give me a good workspace, I say, is there enough space in the joint itself? So if we go in the joint itself, so here's a little diagram. I'll just draw one bone here and another bone here. And then I'll draw a capsule around this joint. So the capsule is this enclosed space which really dictates how much motion the joint is allowed to have. So let's call this a shoulder joint. If I want to flex my shoulder, if I want to extend my shoulder, if I want to abduct my shoulder, this bone has to move relative to that bone in order to demonstrate my workspace. Now, what happens if your capsule is, for lack of a better word, let's call it fibrotic. The capsule's tightened. Let's say the capsule is now almost like shrink-wrapped around your joint. So now you don't have that extra bit in the capsule. This person doesn't have enough space within the capsule to allow the bones to couple properly to then allow them to demonstrate a good workspace towards for me. So as soon as I see there's something wrong with the, the general workspace, the first thing I have to find out is, does the joint itself have enough room to allow this workspace to happen? And one reason why CARS is so good is it allows me to see this, and then when I see that's a problem, it allows me to go right into here with a, slightly, a slight alteration of the CARS. I can then understand whether or not the joint has the prerequisite space to even allow this workspace to be attained. If that joint space is restricted, and this is what I tell a lot of people, it doesn't matter how good your training is. If this bone cannot move relative to this bone, then by definition, you do not have a workable shoulder. That's it. So you can say, you know, well, what exercises are you doing with this athlete to make them, you know, punch harder, slap, take a better slap shot? And I'll say, well, before you get a faster slap shot or a harder punch, do you actually have the joint which you're needing in order to perform that slap shot or perform that punch? CARS allows us to see that. So what we do is we take a step backwards. Instead of looking at athletic movement, we look at the athlete themselves. What are their joints capable of? Because if there's restriction here, it doesn't matter how hard you train, you can't train your way past this restriction. If your shoulder cannot carry out the purpose of a shoulder, then any subsequent things you do with your shoulder are not going to be done with your shoulder. They're going to be done with other areas of your body. And as soon as you allow another area of the body to compensate for something that's not working, 
your elbow doesn't work as a shoulder as good as a shoulder works as a shoulder. Your mid-thoracic spine doesn't work as well as a shoulder as a shoulder works as a shoulder. So as soon as that compensation is allowed to proceed, the compensatory area is going to break down as it's trying to take the job of the shoulder. 